Video tutorial number 11, stretching the canvas of your completed painting. If you remember when we originally started to paint this canvas, we marked down with pencil on the side the size of the painting so that we would always have it and know what size stretcher bars to purchase. So this is 18 inches by 14 inches. So I bought two of each, two that go 14 inches that are the top and bottom and two that are 18 inches that are the sides. The size of the stretcher bars is marked on the back. You will notice that on one side it's totally flat and on the other side there's a little bit of an edge. All the pieces that you put together will have the edge facing the same way because ultimately when you're stretching it, you're going to stretch it around the raised edge. That is so that the canvas will have a buoyancy and be this smooth, taut piece over something that's very thin rather than over like a big clunky piece of wood. The pieces come with grooves already in them, so you're going to put those, the, the pointed edge of one into a groove of another, and we're going to do long side to top to long side to bottom. So we put them in just a little bit, just enough that we can then start hammering. You take your hammer and you keep going around until they fit together. So once we've hammered all the pieces together, we want to make sure that it's a perfect rectangle. I can actually eyeball this and see that it's off just a little bit, but to make sure what we do is we take a triangle and we put it up to the corners. And if you can see that there's a little bit of a gap. So I see that I need to start to hammer that side down a little bit. Keep going around until we get it to be just right. Now that we have done the triangle test on all four corners of these stretcher bars and we see that they are all perfect right angles, then we know that this set of stretcher bars is ready to have the canvas stretch on top of it. So now we go to the canvas. And if you remember from the very beginning, when we were laying out the size, it was really important to mark off where the edge of the painting was going to be. And we did that by extending the lines and making them prominent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take push pins and we're going to put them in right at that joint, right where those, where those lines meet. And this is how we create our corners so we know just how to stretch the canvas. Then we take our already set up stretcher bars with the groove side facing towards the canvas. And we're going to place it down so that it fits just where those little push pins are. Once you feel like you are close enough to where the push pins are, you can take the push pins out because you don't want to stretch with them in. They're bulky. And you have holes now that are there that are just as much of a guide. We go asymmetrically around the canvas, pulling really tightly. So now that the stretcher bars are situated exactly where you want them to be, we're going to start. Let's start over on the left-hand side at the top. Pull really tightly. Take your staple gun and make a mark. Then, because I said asymmetrically, we're going to go, let's go around to the side, but in the middle. And we're going to go pull tightly, as tightly as you can. Then we're going to go back around, let's go to this side. Once you have all the sides stapled, it's time to do the corners. The corners are important, and no matter what the orientation of your painting, whether it's vertical or horizontal, you always want to have the tops and the bottoms be the part that overlaps the sides. It is like wrapping a package. You're going to take your corner, and you remember you're going to go from on the top, and since this is a vertical painting, the top is the vertical side. So we are going to go and we're going to make this nice little package here, pull tightly, and staple. Now that you've done all four sides and the corners, the painting looks like it is totally stretched on the stretcher bars. 
There's one more step that has to be done, which is to put a wash of water on the back, which tightens the canvas like a drum, much like when you have canvas sneakers and they get caught in the rain, they feel tight. So we do a total wash, we paint the back, and we take our brush and we squeeze it all the way into where the stretcher bars are so that the entire painting gets wet. When you have put the entire wash down, sometimes you will notice that there'll be a pool of water at the bottom of your canvas. That's totally fine. You can either turn it upside down and let the water spill out, or you can just keep it at the bottom. It'll eventually evaporate. Once you're finished stretching the entire canvas, putting the wash on the back, you look at it from the front and make sure that it is just as you want it to be. I see that there is some original white canvas appearing, so I'm going to take paint and choose my colors according to what is going on in the rest of the painting. And really, it is a very satisfying part because you get to decorate a little bit. This ends my series of video tutorials on painting and drawing. I have loved sharing all the things that I think about and focus on every step of the way as I create my art. I hope that you have gotten enough out of these videos to feel confident as you create your own art. And I also hope that you see these videos as the difference between merely learning basic skills and cultivating your talent.